how to go in a war against a nation and later become its president. Can you be ruthless to your opponents and still be loved by everyone? Is it possible to say no to Stalin and not get killed instantly? Only one person could answer all these questions. Josip Broz Tito Tito was born in today's Croatia, which belonged to Austria-Hungary. He was just a regular dude from a rural family, working odd jobs. But then, the army called. As a member of Croatia's Home Guard Division, Tito quickly rose through the ranks and became the youngest sergeant in the Austro-Hungarian army. When the war started, Tito was fighting against the Serbs. He was in the Devil's Division, which was called that because they were friendly people who certainly didn't massacre any villages. Although it's probable that Tito's regiment wasn't one of those responsible. After being vocal against the war, Tito was imprisoned and then sent to the Eastern Front where the Russians captured him. Fast forward to 1920. Tito returns home after years of imprisonment and hiding. The Communist Party was made illegal in Yugoslavia and Tito was its illegal member. Meanwhile, Stalin's NKVD, which stands for not killing very discreetly, it doesn't, started cleansing communists who had different views from those in Russia. It was enough for someone to be called a Trotskyist, or the fact that their mustache was suspiciously blonde. They didn't really need a reason, they just needed a list. Tito, not wanting to be on that list, decided that he should be the one making it. One by one, Tito's rivals were removed from the picture. By the beginning of the Second World War, Tito was the main communist guy in Yugoslavia with more than 700 Yugoslav communists cleansed. Some were killed by the NKVD, some were sent to the Spanish Civil War, and some went outside with wet hair. The World War II in Yugoslavia was a whole crazy thing in and of itself. Nevertheless, here's a brief recap. You had Nazis occupying most of the country. You had Serbian Chetniks who were monarchists. They would terrorize non-Serbs and communists, not being shy to work with the Nazis to achieve their goal. This just in, we interrupt this video to join the Tokyo Award Ceremony. The nominees for the most evil regime of the 20th century are... North Korea's Kim Dynasty Equatorial Guinea under Ngema Nazi Germany And the Ustashe of the Independent State of Croatia And the winner is... Well, obviously the, the Nazis, but the Ustashe came quite close. They ran extermination camps and were the only ones with death camps exclusively for kids. Some wouldn't even make it there. They'd get thrown into deep pits inhabited by both the dead and the living. Amidst all of this, there were the partisans. Led by Tito, they started out hiding from the others as much as possible. However, on their side was the fact that they were united by communism and not nationality or religion. Soon, people from all parts of Yugoslavia joined them and the partisans became the most effective resistance movement in Europe. Since he was doing so well, Tito thought, why not make myself a marshal? Also, why not keep Serbs and Croats in the same country? He just missed the opportunity to be hilarious and give the new country an official policy of something like brotherhood and unity. Oh, 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 he did? Well then, welcome to the new Yugoslavia. What could possibly go wrong? After the war, Yugoslavia developed rapidly. There was a one-party system and Tito was the president of both the party and the country. He suppressed religion and nationalism by deleting wartime memories. If you were okay with this, you'd love the guy. A job was waiting for you as well as a cheap flat and a big lollipop. Tito changed the constitution so that he could become president for life. The new constitution, however, allowed more power to the republics and that eventually paved the way for the Yugoslav wars in the 90s. And what about crime? Well, Tito had a secret police and crime was handled in a fairly original way. Listen up, Tuki. This is the third person you stabbed this month. You can't just go around stabbing everyone who doesn't like your video. I'm sorry. But sorry's not gonna do it this time. You have two options. Option one, spend your life in Yugoslav jail. Option two, we give you passport with fake name. You go to Western Europe and do what our secret service says. 
Now if you want to rob a bank or do crime, we don't really care. Just not here. Uh, can I think about it? Doing crime though was nothing compared to trash talking Tito. Yugoslavia had its own Alcatraz for political prisoners. It was on an island called Goliotok, which means barren island because it had nothing but stone on it. Newcomers had a nice welcome. They'd have to pass inmates who'd beat them with stones and chains. Nine beans and a bucket of water is what they'd get for the whole day. But what would get you there? Pretty much anything. Criticizing, telling a joke, or wearing socks and sandals. Here's a true example. There were two pictures hanging in a room. One of Stalin and one of Tito. Remove the picture. Which one? Being pro-Stalin was a big no-no back then. Wait, weren't Stalin and Tito like communist buddies? Well then... Unlike other communist leaders, Tito didn't want to be under heavy Soviet influence. Stalin's request to have his intelligence agency in Yugoslavia was declined and Tito started making decisions on his own. This made Stalin a bit angry with Tito and Yugoslavia were kicked out of the common form. As always, Stalin got personal with it and tried to have Tito assassinated multiple times. After several failed attempts, Tito said to Stalin, Hey, yo, Joe, stop sending people to kill me. We've already captured five of them. If you don't stop, I'll send one to Moscow and I won't have to send another. With the Cold War going on, Tito found himself between the West and the East, but not being part of either. So, together with the leaders of Ghana, Egypt, India and Indonesia, he formed the Non-Aligned Movement. The idea basically was to be cool with both sides and not get involved. More than 100 countries joined the movement and Tito's Yugoslavia was one of the most respected countries in the world. They were the first communist country to open its borders and allow foreign tourists to come and go as they please. Life in Yugoslavia was pretty sweet. Salaries weren't particularly great, but since everything was cheaper, the standard of life was high. People were able to enjoy month-long vacations and go overseas without a visa. Tito was also respected throughout the world. Yugoslavia was one of the few communist countries which had great relations with anti-communist regimes. And after Stalin's death, Tito was liked on both sides of the Cold War. All of this probably explains why four days after Josip Broz Tito's death, the world saw the largest state funeral at the time. Delegates from all over the world joined around 700,000 Yugoslavs to pay their last respects to the greatest son of Yugoslav peoples and nationalities. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to click on the bell icon at the bottom of the screen in order to be notified when a new video comes out. See you soon!